going on, guys? Um, I'm doing another... It's So, as you can see, if you look on screen now, um, I did something a little different. I set up a uh, cheap, small projector I have and threw on um, my Weather Channel playlist, the one that I threw together, the week-long one. And I decided to throw a bit of a her old hurricane... I don't remember exactly which one it was, but um, it was one of those hurricanes. <laughs> um, I'm also I'm also not going to be as loud or as funny this episode because I think I'm losing my voice and I don't want to push it. And I know that laughing and screaming and cackling is not going to be the most conducive to my situation. So um, I thought I might as well. No, I, I, it's say I. I I'm losing my voice, so I don't want to be too uh, bold and brash today. How about this one? I call it bold and brash. More like belongs in the trash! <laughs> it's been a weird week because I just started my senior year of college, which is crazy. I didn't think that I'd ever get through my freshman year of college, and little did I know that I'd actually make it to my senior year of college. So that is a really weird and kind of scary feeling. Um, I'm also chilling in my bed right now just because I want this to be a chill episode vibe. And to do that, I'm going to turn my fan to a lower setting so it's not as loud. Um, I've been really uh, excited recently about watching new films because I just recently... Um, did my final watch of uh, Daisy Confused, the 45th time in a row. That is not a joke. Um, <laughs> that's so embarrassing to say, but it's just it was on loop basically for the span of in almost the entirety of July, basically, I think. Um, but it's been fun. <laughs> but since I just finished that, I've been weirdly into... Um, I don't know, I've been seeing more in the the other films that I watch, like, um, like I, I see more of the attention to detail than I usually do, because sometimes, when you watch 365 things in a row, or you plan to watch 365 things in a row, at least one thing every day, you think it's easy, but sitting setting aside a good chunk of your time to be fully focused on something, something that is considered high art, it's not as easy as you might think and especially when it comes to film when films are so rich and diverse and so many of them you, you, there's so much you might miss um <clears throat> but it's just when you watch the same thing over and over again and then you finally watch something else you realize oh i'm seeing this thing like i recently i just rewatched um True Stories by David Byrne a few times in a row, and I'll get into that in a minute because that's its whole own thing, probably. Um, but when I watched it, I realized, oh, I'm picking up more of uh, some things that I might have passed over previously. And I'm just... Um, I, I find it interesting. I wonder if like a reset like that is necessary when it comes to watching films or consuming media. It's uh, like a detox... I, I don't think that the way I'm doing it, 365 days of watching things, is entirely conducive to being a, a good film watcher. Um, I'm definitely not doing it again. I, I might do it in, like, not this upcoming year, not 2024, but maybe 2025. Um, I might do it again just to, who knows? Um, the, the future is bright. Um but it's like, yeah, anyways. I was just excited about that. Um, my younger sister started high school, which is really scary. Now uh, now she's killing it. So I think she just did, I think there was a softball tryout either today or yesterday. Good luck, Finley. Even if you didn't make it, we, uh, we think you're the bomb. And uh, love you, kid. Give a shout out to my younger sister. She's previously on the pod. Um, but yeah, um, now let's talk about, uh, 
uh, let's talk about the weird Weather Channel fascination I have. Um, the, obviously, because I'm, I, I made a playlist for the Weather Channel compiling hours of footage and organizing them, organizing hours of footage into a playlist on YouTube that is still not organized. I still have a bunch of videos to go through, which I have to find some time to sit down and do that sometime soon. Um, but I don't know. It's It just started one time, when, like during this summer, where I saw an, old, an upload of old an old Weather Channel broadcast. It's like two hours long. It was... I don't even know what date, but it, it, I just saw the, the design aspects and I was like, just so fascinated by it. I, I don't know what it was. It, I think it's the color, the balance of the colors and the updating of the designs. Like, cause that, that playlist, if you don't know about it, I'll throw it in the description. Um, it's great if you want to fall asleep to it. Cause usually these weather channel videos aren't super, um, abrasive, um, except when there's like severe weather alerts, which some of the videos do have, but. Um, I think it's good for sleep. Sometimes I put it on. I've been doing that a lot recently. I've been putting on like things to sleep and then I, uh, I put my TV on like a 30 minute time or so 30 minutes after. Um, I fall asleep in that time. I probably fall asleep within like the first 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but then my TV automatically shuts off and it works really well actually. Um, maybe I'll talk about that too. It's actually all pretty great stuff and the only reason I do put it on is because I respect it enough to fall asleep to fall asleep to it um, or don't respect it enough I guess that's a question but anyways um, yeah I'm rarely into the weather channel uh, designs and um, if you're curious go check it out because you, you you see the evolution it's really interesting but speaking of things I fall asleep to because this is a sleep uh, Let's call this a sleep episode. I'm gonna turn on my desk lamp. There we go. And I wanted to read a, uh, I wanted to read the opening to Quentin Tarantino's Once, in Time, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood novelization. And then after that, I will go back in time and read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. <laughs> so we get a lot of um, time in between the two. But I'll do the, maybe I'll do the first chapter. I'm not sure how long it is, but I, I enjoy reading a lot. So I'm going to take just a minute so I can find my place and then I'll get back into it with you guys. Um, I, I found out that to read this chapter, I'd have to do an impression of Al Pacino. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to find a different book to read you guys um, instead. Something more modern, hopefully. And then, yeah. Okay, so instead of reading from uh, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I'm going to be reading from the first chapter of Dune, which I'm still very, very excited for. Um, and I do intend to finish um, during the length of September. Um, and we'll get started. This is just, I'm not going to read the uh, fr the manual of the Muad'Dib stuff or the stuff that opens each chapter, but I will be reading the main parts. In the week before their departure to Arrakis, when all the final scurrying about had reached a nearly unbearable frenzy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy, Paul. Dad? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh too hard. Um, it was a warm night at Castle Caledon. And the ancient pile of stone that had, that had served the... Uh, I'm so bad at reading books. Why did I choose to read a book out loud? It's like the worst thing for me. It's so hard. Especially when I know I'm being recorded. Um, okay. It was a warm night at Castle Caledon. And the ancient pile of stone that had served the Atreides family as, a, the Atreides family as home for 26 generations bore that cooled sweat feeling it had acquired before a change in the weather. The old woman was led in by the side door down the vaulted passage by Paul's room, and she was allowed a moment to peer in at him, peer in at him, where he had lay in his bed. By the half-light of a suspenser lamp, dimmed and hanging near the door, the awakened boy could see a bulky female shape at his door, standing one step ahead of his mother. The old woman was a witch shadow, hair like matted spiderwebs, hooded round darkness of features, eyes like glittering jewels. 
Is he not small for his age, Jessica? The old woman asked. Her voice wheezed and twanged like an untuned ballast. Paul's mother answered in a soft contralto. The Atreides are known to start late getting their growth. Your reference. So I've heard. So I've heard. Wheezed the old woman. It is already fifteen. Yes, your reference. He's awake and listening to us, said the old woman. Sly little rascal. She chuckled. But the royalty need... But, the royal, but royalty has need of slyness. And if... And, oof, this is such a hard word coming up. But royalty has need of slyness. And if he's really the... I don't know how to say it. The Quizash Hatterack. I don't know how to say that. I actually don't know. I'm going to refer to it, if it comes up again in this chapter, I'm going to refer to it as the KH, because I do not know how to say that word, or either of those words. Within the shadow of his bed, Paul held his eyes open to mere slits. Two bird-bright ovals, the eyes of the old woman, seemed to expand and glow as they stared into his. Sleep well, you sly little rascal, said the old woman. Tomorrow you'll need all your facilities to meet my gum jabah. I know how to say that one because I, because the audiobook, the late when the lady says it is sick as shit. She has a great voice. I don't know who it is, but uh, her I would read a book narrated by her. Um, and she was gone, pushing his mother out, closing the door with a solid thump. Paul lay awake wondering, "What's a gom jabar?" And all the upset during the time of change, the old woman was the strangest thing he had seen. Your reverence. The way she called his mother Jessica like a common serving wench, like a common serving wench instead of what she was, a Bennett Jesuit lady, a duke's concubine, and a mother of the ducal heir, and mother of the ducal heir. Is a gomjabar something of a rackus I must know before we go there? he wondered. He mouthed the strange words. Gomjabar. K H, because I still don't know how to say that, and I don't want to find out. <laughs> there had been so many things to learn. Arrakis would be a place so different from Caledon that Paul's mind whirled with a new knowledge. Arrakis. Dune. Desert planet. Thufir Hawat, his father's master of, master of assassins, <laughs> his father's master of assassin, had explained it. Their mortal enemies, the Harkonnens, had been on Arrakis 80 years, holding the planet in quasi- Oh. Holding the planet in quasi-fife under a Chome Company contract to mine the J- I don't know what, why is it called the geriatric spice? That, that intends old. Is it aged? I don't know. The con, uh, a chome company contract to mine the, a chome company contract to mine the geriatric spice melange. Now the Harkonnens were leaving to be replaced by the house of Atreides in Fife Complete, an apparent victory for the Duke Leto. Yet Hawat had said, this, appear, this appearance contained the deadliest peril, for the Duke Leto was among the greatest heroes of the Lestrade. The Landstrad. The great houses of the Landstrad. I fucked up that whole last sentence when I started over. <clears throat> Yet Hawat had said this appearance contained the deadliest peril, for the Duke Leto was popular amongst the great houses of the Landstrad. A popular man arouses jealousy of the powerful, Hawat said. Arrakis. Dune. Desert planet. Paul fell asleep to dream of an Arakin cave. Silent people all around him, moving in dim lights of glow globes. It was solemn there and like a cathedral as he listened to a faint sound, the drip, drip, drip of water. Even while he remained in the dream, Paul knew he would remember it upon awakening. He always remembered the dreams that were predictions. The dream faded. Paul awoke to feel himself in the warmth of his bed, thinking, thinking. This world of Castle Caledon, without player companions of his own age, perhaps did not serve sadness and farewell, deserve sadness and farewell. Dr. Yue, his teacher, had hinted that the Farfaluch's class system were not rigidly guarded on Arrakis. On Arrakis. Am I not emphasizing my words? I might not be emphasizing my words. That, um, I don't. I hope that's not the case, but it might be. I have a bad thing. When I speak a lot, my mouth fills with saliva. Um, Paula woke to feel... Oh, I already read that. The planet sheltered people who lived at the desert edge, the desert edge without... <coughs> my goodness. I have to take a sip of dodo juice. Yes, a little late night dodo juice. I'm also listening to Star Maker by Roy Hargrove, only on Jordan PM. <laughs> A little smooth jazz to tie your night together, even better. Taking a quick pause from Dune after I got a little sip of dodo juice. Thought I was all, might as well keep the pause in. No harm in it, you know. These things happen.
this is really is a fantastic song. I I'm I want to I'm gonna throw a link to it in the description. So um, to Spotify and YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoy. <clears throat> the planet sheltered people who lived at the desert edge without Cade or Bashar to command them. Will of the sand people called Fremen. Will of the sand what? Will of the sand people called Fremen. Huh? Will o' the sand people called Fremen marked down on no census of the imperial regat regate regate I'm assuming it's regate I don't know why it says regal like a good ricotta cheese <clears> hmm <throat> irritated my throat Arrakis Dune desert planet Paul senses his own tensions deciding to practice one of the mind body lessons his mother had taught him the weak quick breath triggered the responses. He fell into the floating awareness, focusing the consciousness, aortal, di aortal dilation, avoiding the unfocused mecha mechanism of consciousness, to be conscious by choice, blood enriched and swift flooding the overloaded regions. One does not obtain food safety freedom by instinct alone. Animal consciousness does not extend beyond the given moment, nor into the idea that its victims may become extinct. The animal destroys and does not produce. Animal pleasures remain close to sensation levels and avoid and avoid the perceptual. The human requires a background grid through, through which to see his universe. Focus, con focus consciousness by choice. This form, this forms your grid. Bodily, wow, I'm, I think I might be finished with this bit. There's a, there's a big break in the text coming up, so I'll stop at that. Um, bodily integrity follows nerve blood flow according to the deepest awareness of cell needs. All things, cells, beings are impermanent. Strive for flow, permanence within. Over and over, within Paul's floating awareness, the lesson rolled. When Don touched Paul's window, still with the yellow light, he sensed it through closed eyelids, opened them. Hearing the renewed bus That sentence sucks. Hearing the renewed bustle and hurry in the castle. I hate that the B and bustle and H and hurry throw my mind off because you immediately think hustle and bustle when you see bustle. Which is a horrible word to say. I hate the word bustle. So, seeing the familiar, familiar patterned beams of his bedroom ceiling, the hall door opened and his mother peered in. Hair like shaded bronze, held with black ribbon at the crown. Her oval, her oval face emotionless and green eyes staring solemnly. "You're awake," she said. "Did you sleep well?" "Yes." He studied the tallness of her, saw the hint of tension in her shoulders as she chose clothing for him from the closet racks. Another might have missed the tension. But she had trained him in the bed at Jesuit way, in the minutia of observation. She her, she turned, she turned, holding a semi-formal jacket for him. He carried the red Atreides hawk crest above the best above the breast pocket. Hurry and dress, she said. Reverend Mother is waiting. I dreamed of her once, Paul said. Who is she? She was my teacher at the Bennett Jesuit School. Now she's the Emperor's truthsayer. And Paul? She hesitated. You must tell her about your dreams. Tell, you must tell her about your dreams. I don't know if I said the her. And emphasize the each. Emphasize the each. Um, oh, I didn't even mention this. Uh, I, I threw out a um, name of a smooth jazz song earlier. Not even realizing. Um, I'm going to put my smooth jazz playlist in the description if you're curious. It's, a, it's got 100 songs on it. It's almost nine hours long. It's awesome. Tons of great music. It's got uh, Bill Evans, Miles Davis, John Coltrane. A lot of Bill Evans, because I'm a huge fan. Uh, Miles Davis, like I said. Duke Ellington. Wes Montgomery. Charles Mingus. Chet Baker. Lester Young. Tons of great names. Uh, Thelonious Monk is in there, obviously. Yeah. Ton of great names. Back to Dune. Sorry, I keep switching in between the two. It's a lot of good talk today, though. I hope you guys are enjoying. I will. Is she the reason we got Arrakis? We did not get Arrakis. Jessica flicked out dust from a pair of trousers, hung them with the jacket on the dresser stand beside the bed. Don't keep Reverend Mother waiting. Paul sat up, hugged his knees. I don't like that sentence either. Paul sat, sat up hugging his knees. Anyways, unless I'm completely reading this wrong. Oh, no, that is that is correct. Never mind. I, I'm stupid. Paul sat up, hugged his knees. What's a ganja bar? Again, the training she had given him exposed her almost invisible hesitation. A nervous betrayal as she felt fear. As... A nervous betrayal at he felt as fear. I read that wrong, but it still worked in the context. Jessica crossed to the window, 
flung, the, flung wide the draperies, stared across the river orchards toward Mount Siubi. You'll learn about the Gamjabar soon enough. You'll learn about the Gamjabar soon enough, she said. Hear the fear in her voice and wondered at it. Jessica spoke without turning. Reverend Mother is waiting in my morning room. Please hurry. There we go. And then that's uh, enough Dune. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we've been going for a, a good amount of time. Um, um, you know, just I'm really getting into the chill mood. I, I put out that little short film that I did recently. The, um, the uh, spot on my wall one, which I, I'm very proud of and I hope uh, people liked. And yeah, I, I just, it was a really fun one. I decided to do it just one night out of nowhere. I, I, I was thinking, I was like, man, I haven't filmed something small just that I can put out, something that I, that I, I can have fun editing. Of course, I have fun editing a lot of my stuff like are you kidding me that's not even a not even a second thought um but anyways i, I just I, I thought of it one night and i was like man i, I want to shoot this so i did and then it was just such a fun time yeah i could just you know i'll throw that in the description too maybe i'll throw in a clip who knows um but yeah i i mentioned a song earlier and I thought I might as well give another song shout out or two uh, recently I've been digging synthesizers by who is it by Butch Walker that's right uh, it's an older song and the reason I listened to it is because um, it was in it wasn't in anything why, why did I start that's right because uh, the music video has Matthew McConaughey reprising his role as Wooderson from Days and Confused. That's right. And it's a fun it's a fun music video, but I actually I like the song. Um, I also really like Do You Realize by the Flaming Lips. That's a great one. It's that's fantastic. Um, another one, Eyes Without a Face by Billy Idol. Fantastic song. Goodbye Horses by Q Lazarus. Um, famous from that scene in uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, you guys know the one. Maybe I'll throw in a clip right here. And yeah, those are some good songs I've been listening to recently. I don't know. It's just they've been they've been they've been in my rotation. What can I say? Um. Oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, there's a lot that's been going on with weather in the ocean recently. Um, and fires, specifically in Maui. I want to talk about that really quickly. Because I have a, f a friend of mine and a co-worker of mine whose family was directly affected. And I, uh, I think this is something that I should talk about as someone who has been to Hawaii. Yes, I'm a tourist. Yes, I suck. I know. Um, but it's the, the least I can do is... Try to support them in any way. I do plan to donate um, this upcoming payday. Um, I'm not sure how much, but I'll find some way to contribute because you know, as it, if anybody has ever been to Hawaii, they ha should give um, some sort of money back because that's the least you can do. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of links in the description, uh, ways you can help, and I urge everyone. I am a small channel, but, you know, if I can donate, I hope other people can donate. Um, I know the world is all cold and cruel sometimes, and there's a lot of negative things to look into, but there's also a lot of good, there's a lot of positivity in the world, and um, by spreading, by having an ability to spread wealth, having probably one of, it's one of the... It's the worst wildfire in U.S. history, so obviously um, it's hard. So, you know, try. That's all I say. Try and give, give them a look. Find out what you can do. Send food. Send money. Um, and Hurricane Hillary is happening right now. Um, 
uh, that's sort of the reason why I put up the hurricane footage, just because um, it is something to think about, because hurricanes are no joke, man. It's so devastating, and I hope uh, all the people in SoCal, because I'm a, I'm a California boy, also a California girl. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's just, you know, I wish uh, everybody that might be affected and that has already been affected, especially those in, um, I believe, Baja, California, which uh, touched down was the first place to touch down, made landfall, I think, if I'm correct. Um, and so I also, uh, I don't know if there's going to be any links by the time I, links to help uh, support people by the time I upload this podcast, but there is, there will be in the description, you know. And it's the least I can do with the small bit of influence that I have is to try to promote some sort of good in the world. Um, say hello to your fellow man, give him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. That's all I got to say. And um, I think I want to get into Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Um, this is going to be even harder for me to read because it's Old English, I believe. Plus all of my older sister's fucking notes in this copy. Because this was the copy she used in high school and it's the copy that I used in high school. I didn't take notes. She did. Thanks, Madison. Um, I guess we just start at the beginning. Um, this is the uh, Penguin Classics edition. I'm not sure which version. Um, I will find out. Hey, there's my signature. I still sign my stuff like that sometimes. And a little shape I did. I remember drawing that shape. That's a, it's a really cool one. Maybe I'll throw in some pictures of my of that shape. Cool. I like how she didn't put any um, explanations for why some of the highlights are there because some of them say uh, unknown words and religion and then the two other colors just don't say fucking anything so you know good job Madison for really taking some detailed notes no wonder I fucking failed that test I'm just kidding. Um, before I get into it I'm going to take a quick break get a sip of water or two and we will jump back into it <laughs> I think I'm ready, but I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, stupid as shit. Sorry, guys. Um, but I just want to play a nice song in my headphones while I read it. And I think I will. Here we go. The siege and the assault being ceased to Troy, the matter. The battlements broken down and burnt to brains and ashes, the treacherous trickster who treason there flourished was framed for his falsehood in the foulest on earth. Aeneas the noble and his knightly kin then conquered kingdoms, kingdoms and kept in their hand, while nigh all the wealth of the western lands, royal Romulus to Rome first turned, oh, whoops, then conquered kingdoms and kept in their hand, while nigh all the wealth of the western lands, royal Romulus to Rome first turned. Set up the city in splendid pomp, splendid pomp, and named her with his own name, for which now she still has. Tis Tisius founded Tuscany, township raising, Longbeard and Lombany, lifted up homes, and far over the French flood, Felix Brutus, on many spacious slopes sets in Britain with joy and grace, where war and feud and wonder have ruled this realm and space, and after bliss and blunder, by turns have run their race. And when this Britain was built by this bravest noble, here bold men bred in battle exult. Stirs of trouble in turbulent times, here many a marvel more than in other lands, have befallen by fortune some since that far time. But all who, but all who abode here of Britain's knights, Arthur was highest in honor, as I have heard. So I intend to tell you of a true aunt wonder, which many folk mention as manifest marvel. Happening eminent among Arthur's adventures, listen to me lay but a little while. Straight away shall I speak, and city as I heard it, with tongue, as scribes have said it duly, and lower the land so long, with letters linking truly, and story bold and strong. This king lay at Camelot one Christmas tide, with many mighty lords, many liegemen, members m rightly reckoned of the round table. In splendid celebration, seemingly, seemly and carefree. Their tussling in tournament time and again, jousting and jollity, these gentle knights, 
Then in court carnival sing catches and dance. For fifteen day the feasting there was full in like measure, with all the meat and merry making men could devise. Gladly ringing glee, glorious to hear, a doble din by day, dancing at night. All was happiness in the heightened halls and chambers, for lords and their ladies, delectable joy. With all delights on earth, they housed there, there together, saving Christ's self for more celebrated nights. The loveliest lady is to live in all time, and the comeliest king to ever keep court, for this fine fellowship was in its fair prime, far famed. Stood well in hell, stood well in heaven's will, its high soul the king acclaimed, so hardly a host on hill could not easily, could not with ease be named. The year being so young, that yester even saw its birth, the day on double, uh, the day double on the dies, where the diner served, mass sung and service ended, straight from the chapel. The king and his company came into hall. Called on with cries from clergy and laity, Noel was newly announced, name and time again. Named, named time and again. Then lords and ladies leaped forth, largesse distributing, offered New Year's gifts in high voices, handing them out, bustling and bantering about these offerings. Ladies laughed full loudly, though losing their will. And he that won was not willful, you may... I actually, um... I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> I cannot subbreed Sir Gawain in the Green Knight. I am 100% certain of myself. And I don't think you guys want to hear me read that either. So, we'll give it a rest there. Um, I might even nix the entire last part there because it sounded so terrible. So, if uh, the cut seems very abrasive, that's probably why. Anyways, uh, let's talk about a game I've been playing recently. Uh, it's weird, actually. I've been playing more games recently. Like, I for a while, I get in these phases where I play games often, and I don't. And sometimes I play them, and then sometimes I don't. But recently, I've been on a, a big kick when it comes to video games, because I've been playing a lot of, uh, a lot of Subnautica. I, uh, have a new sa I, I started a new save file, because I would previously played it back in October, November, December of last year. I'm not entirely sure, but long enough away to know that I basically remember nothing, um, aside from the basics. So I, I got myself a little uh, a starter sheet of some of the things I need to do, some of the best ways to go about it, um, how to get ba a base faster, uh, just some good ways to go about things. And um, it, I don't know, it's just been... I played it. I think my save file is like over a day now of total time played. Um, when the last time I played it was about twelve, so it's 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 really got me this time, and I think I I wouldn't be surprised if I was actually able to beat the game, um, but for someone like me, because that's a complicated game for someone like me. I don't know, just the way my brain works. Um, but I've been doing really good recently, so um, I actually have a a few minute segment of just footage of me playing Subnautica. Um, I don't have commentary on it, but, but you know, that's not but not that big a deal. Um, I'll throw it in here. It, I'll, I'll just, I'll throw some of the, the more fun moments. Um, it shouldn't be too long, hopefully. Um, unless I found it all really entertaining, in which it's going to be like 11 minutes of me playing Subnautica. Um, since it's supposed to be chill, I'll try to keep it, you know, just not super scary, not super loud noises. Um, so here we go. Um, if you don't know what Subnautica is, Subnautica is an ocean an ocean exploration game. It deals with the concept of thalassophobia, and it fucking is terrifying, but also really awesome. So if you play video games and haven't played Subnautica, play it. And if you have played Subnautica, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're too old to play Subnautica, because you're probably my parents, it sucks for you guys, sorry.
I think that was uh, it was pretty good. I mean, I I, I dig Subnautica. I, I think for a podcast, I would like to do um basically just a gaming video with my typical uh, podcasting format. Why why I think that would work in this circumstance is because. Rather than it being a gaming video, I can categorize it as the episode of an episode of this podcast um, because I can use this podcast to examine different types of videos. Like I, I, I did technically I did a cooking video, um, a very bare bones version of a cooking video last week, but still a cooking video. So it's like it's like can I explore a gaming video in a podcast format? Um, we will, we'll see, you know, and I think the last thing that I want to talk about is a movie I've been watching recently that I just, I, I re-fell in love with, like, I, I, I like this movie, I like this movie a lot, don't get me wrong, I think it's five stars, I think it's fantastic, but, um, but consider this my, like, movie recommendation of the week. I've watched it three times in a row, and I'm not going to turn into another Days and Confused situation. I have to watch a different movie tomorrow. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But I've been watching True Stories by David Byrne. I mentioned it earlier, and here's where I'm bringing it back up. True Stories by David Byrne is just such a fun and endearing film with such a creative, such a distinct creative mind behind it. That I think is it's well worth a watch. Whoa, that's a crazy triple word score. Well worth watch. Triple uh, that's a tongue twister, you know. Give that a triple word score. T- tongue twister. I keep saying triple word score like it means anything in the circumstance. It doesn't. <coughs> Took another sip of the dodo juice. Um, oh God. I keep getting I keep getting loud just because that's that's what my mind wants to do during this pod. But anyways, um. I, I, I just put it on one day a few days ago and I just I, I really it was the first time I think I, I really sat down and watched it like all the way through because you know you, you can watch a film but not really watch it you know what I mean your brain has to be in film mode and I don't think mine was at that point but this time it was and I just I, 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 I it latched on to me I just I put this in my review on Letterboxd but I said if you want it, if you ever want an easy film to watch, but one that's equally as engaging, watch True Stories. It is a really fun time to just sit back and watch and witness these unique residents of Virgil live their lives, like John Goodman playing the unbelievably charming Lewis Fine. Super fun, and he's just a super funny character. Um, but it's also just a great exploration of small towns in general, and more specifically, um, small town Americana. Because this is such it's it, this is such a distinctly American film. You could not make a film about this about a small town in like anywhere else in the world. Because it, it, this is it, it, it's it's a slightly exaggerated and a slightly you know um, I wouldn't say flanderized, but it, it's a more it, it's more exaggerated version of what actually happens. But it boiled down to it, I think this is just the perfect amalgamation of American small town uh, small town Americana. It's fantastic. Plus, uh, David Byrne's directing is dope as shit. He he uses a lot of framing where the ho- the horizon is right in the middle, but because the landscape is so flat, it gives a completely unique perspective. Because instead of having like mountains rising in the background and changing the topography of the landscape, you just see into nothing, and it's super cool in that way. Um, and for someone who has only directed one film, he, I mean, he knocked it out of the park. Uh, it, it's it's so fantastic. Um, 
it, it it's presented in such an endearing way that you can't have you can't help but have a smile on your face while watching it. It's it's like it's the way the people speak and the way the people think. They're quirky and they're interesting and they're 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 all they're all different, completely unique characters with their own things going on within the world that you're like, oh, interesting. You really are just watching vignettes of people's lives play out, and it, it's it's awesome. There's not a mean bone in this film's body, and, and and I think David Byrne, playing the narrator, is such a fun, just. He's so infectiously curious. It's insane because there's a scene where um, he's walking through a mall and he watches these two characters laughing at these messed up like um, tabloid headlines. And then he like when he's he, and then he, once he's finished watching them, he's just like, huh. he just laughs it off. He's like, yeah, that's how people are. And here, the music's always playing. Over. What time is it? No time to look back. Starving peasants sell their bodies to vampires for blood money. It's just so, it's so, it's such a fascinating way to look at so much. And I, 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 it's awesome. Plus, the landscape shots. I, I, I want to go back to the directing because um, I have the Criterion Collection copy of this film. Yes, I have it. Awesome. Absolutely worth it. Um, and it's playing some clips in the movie on the DVD menu. And it's so dope. It's just, it's just, you see it, it's like, man, I've seen these places. It's sort of, it's also sort of posthumously liminal in that way because so many of these spaces are are spaces that are considered liminal these transitional spaces if you don't know what liminal spaces are um oh shit i didn't even think about this um i might have to put this in <laughs> you know what i'm going to record this now uh, but i'm also going to put it in back when i should have put it in for the podcast so you're going to be hearing this twice um if you don't know what subnautica is Subnautica is an ocean an ocean exploration game. It deals with the concept of thalassophobia, and it fucking is terrifying, but also really awesome. So if you play video games and haven't played Subnautica, play it. And if you have played Subnautica, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're too old to play Subnautica, because you're probably my parents, it sucks for you guys, sorry. Unless you want to. I can bring my, I can bring my PlayStation home for Christmas. Unless you still have one, because my mom got like 19 of the PlayStation 5 raffles while I got one and missed it and cried. Yes, I wanted the console that bad. Don't worry. It's fine. I'm normal. I'm getting all heated. I shouldn't be. I'm supposed to be calm. Um, True Stories. Such a dope film. Um, yeah. I, I, I think this is... I don't know how long I've been going, but I'm hoping this is... Oh, yeah. We have... There we go. Perfect. This is a nice uh, short episode. Um, I, I'm starting to aim for 45 minutes. Some of the episodes recently have been shorter because I've been really busy because, of course, I've started school. Um, if the podcast stops suddenly, I, I don't anticipate that they will, but if they do, it's probably just because I'm busy with school. Um, I know I don't have a huge fan base, and if you are listening to this, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you're listening to this far and you're not subscribed already, you're crazy, but if you have, um, please subscribe. I mean, it mean a lot to me. Um, it's small creators, you know. But if you don't subscribe, I'll eat a child. See you later, guys. I'm fucked up at the club. Sorry about that.